Well, hello, friends. Thanks for joining me for Elapsed Time Strategies. I'm Shannon Keebler with Empower Consulting, and let's get started. So there are several different strategies that I suggest that we use with our third and fourth graders as they learn elapsed time. The first one is the choral count. This one is probably one of the most important skills that we give our third graders and is often the one of the most overlooked skills. So sure, we're used to counting when we're in kindergarten, first and second grade. We first count by ones, then we move to things like counting by tens, then twos, then fives, and so forth. We might even then continue our choral count as we work on our count bys or our multiples with multiplication facts. But what about with time? The more our kids are practicing counting by time, the better they will be at elapsed time. So first we're going to do it by hours. So it would be something like, let's count from 12 o'clock p.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. by hours. So it would be 12 p.m., 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5 p.m. We would continue to practice just counting by hours, which is really a skill we can work on in first and second grade as well. We might say count from 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. We wanna make sure we emphasize the a.m. and the p.m. throughout all of the different choral counting. But then we do by minutes. So we might say, let's start at 104 and let's stop when we get to 204. And now we'll count 104, 105, 106, 107 and we'll have kids chorally count until they get to 204. Regardless of how they're counting, if they have a recorder, someone who's recording on the board the numbers that are being said, then students can take some time to look at the patterns. What patterns do you notice when we count by hours? What patterns do you notice when we count by minutes? So on and so forth. And then we get to the important one for third grade, which is really count by off decades, meaning we might say, I want you to start at 1.13 p.m. and I want you to stop when we get to 2.13 a.m. So now we'll count 1.13 p.m., 2.13 p.m., 3.13 p.m., so on and so forth. But when we get to that 11.13 p.m., then we know that we have to freeze because something's about to happen that's important. So when my students count, anytime we get to that 11 o'clock, whether it's 11 o'clock p.m., when we're talking about minutes, or if it's 11 o'clock in the off decade, we always stop at 11 o'clock. So 11.13, freeze, we get our voices ready, our mouths ready for what's about to happen. 12.13 a.m. Something just changed. So this is important for us to start having them know when that a.m. and p.m. switch is because that will impact our elapsed time when the elapsed time goes over an a.m. or a p.m. time frame. So my first suggestion is that we start counting by time. We can start doing this at the beginning of the year uh, as a transition activity. Let's line up. And as we count uh, hours from 104 to 404, I want you to be in line for lunch or however that might look for you. But we can capitalize on those transition times as we equip kids with the skills that they need for elapsed time. Because one of the things that makes elapsed time so complicated for students is they don't know how to count or skip forward by time. The last strategy here that we're going to use is use T-charts to transfer to number lines. So let's take a look at what that's gonna look like. We're gonna use a template to help us after we um, solve this first problem. So if I look at this first problem, I know that I have Sarah does, um, let's see, let's get our pointer here. Sarah does homework beginning at 1.58 and ends at 4.15 p.m. How long did she do homework? So we're going to read that problem a couple of times so that students understand what Sarah's doing, how long she might have worked for, and then I'm going to mark up my text. So Sarah does homework beginning at 1.58. So I know this is at the beginning. This is going to be the start. And then it says, and she ends at 4.15. So I know the end time. What do I not know? I'm gonna put a box here. I don't know the ET, the elapsed time. So that's what I have to find out. So I'm gonna now go to my template here as I decide which of these graphic organizers is going to help me with that information. Well, I just discovered that it was elapsed time that I didn't have. So it's gonna be this teacher. 
So I know my starting time was 158 and I know my ending time was 415. So I'm going to stop counting when I get to 415. So if I'm at 158, the easiest way to count forward is probably by hours. Now some students might want to count by minutes and get to 2 o'clock. But once you do that, when you go to add up your minutes over here on this side, you're going to have some minutes up here, you're going to have some hours down here, then minutes in the middle, and it becomes harder or more difficult for students to add them up. So my suggestion is that you actually have students um, do all the hours first and then the minutes. So let's do that together. 115, excuse me, 158 to 258 to 358. Now, if I keep going, I'm going to get to 458. That's too far. So I've done all my hours. Let's count by minutes. 359, 4 o'clock. And how do I get from 4 o'clock to 415? I go by 15 minutes. So I can make that a kind of a big jump. But some students may need to continue to count by ones. So they would say 4 o'clock, 401, 402, 403, etc. So now let's add up what happened. From 158 to 258, I traveled an hour. 258 to 358, another hour. 358 to 359, one minute. 359 to 4 o'clock, one minute. And 4 o'clock to 415 was 15 minutes. So now I can add up my time, one hour, two hours, and I have 15, 16, 17 minutes. So now I know my elapsed time was two hours and 17 minutes. Now what I would do is I would go to my number line. So most state standards indicate that elapsed time has to be shown on a number line. But for some reason, doing it on the number line to begin with becomes difficult for many students. So if we have them start with the T-chart, then we can move them to the number line. So let's do the same thing. We know that we're starting at 158. And we know we have to end at 415. Now let's take our time frame here and let's travel. So if I did 158, the first thing I did was one hour. So I'm going to do a mountain for hours and I land on 258. And then I did another hour, so I do another mountain for an hour and that's 358. I'm going to label those one hour, one hour. Now I traveled by minutes, go one minute. I'm going to do a hill for a minute. If I go a hill, that would lead me on 359. Then I have another minute, another minute, four o'clock. Then I would need to go 15 minutes. I can do a bigger hill and go 15 minutes and I know I land on 415. So there's my 15, one and one. I can add up that I had two hours and 17 minutes and then I would just adjust my number line accordingly. If students are given the number line, then they just need to figure out where their T-chart fits in on the number line that's given them. So oftentimes the number line will already have times written in and students have to figure out how to use their number line with their T-chart. So that would be another thing we could teach students as to how to interpret the number line and make the same jumps that we made on the T-chart on their number line. Let's look at another example. Sarah does homework beginning at 1.58 and she works for two hours and 17 minutes. What time does she finish? So let's go ahead and mark up this text. We know that Sarah does homework beginning at 1.58. So if she's doing homework beginning at 1.58, then we know that this is the start. And works for two hours and 17 minutes. What time does she finish? Well, the question is what time does she finish? So that means we don't know the end, but we do know then that two hours and 17 minutes is the ET, the elapsed time. So I know I'm looking on my graphic organizer for which T chart is the end unknown. Let's look. So now I can see that it is this one. Let's get there, here we go. That is the end. And so let's figure out what I know. I know the elapsed time is two hours and 17 minutes. I know the start is 158. I don't know the end.
So let's travel two hours and 17 minutes. So I know I'm going to first travel one hour. And if I travel one hour, 158, 258, 358, I traveled another hour. Now I've taken care of my two hours. Now I have to go 17 minutes. And if we remember the last time we traveled 17 minutes, we remembered that it was easier for us to travel the two minutes and then the 15. So I know that 17 can be, oh, try that again. I know that 17 can be broken into a two and a 15 if I'm breaking those up. So let's travel two minutes. Two minutes would be 358. 3.59, 4 o'clock. Or we could label it not as 2, we could label it as 1. Whichever way, students will take their own way there if they do it by minutes or if they chunk them together. And then from I now have 2 hours and 2 minutes, so I did the 2 hours, I did the 2 minutes, I have not done the 15 minutes. So now I'm going to travel from 4 to 4.15 and that means I traveled 15 minutes. So let's see what my end time was, 4.15. Now I have the answer to my problem. I would then go on my number line where we started for one hour and for one, one, one fifty eight, and I had to travel two hours and 17 minutes. So I already know I'm gonna have to travel this many hills and mountains. So let's do all the hills and mountains first. One hour, two hours, Fifth 17 we decided was easier with two minutes and then a 15 minute. So one minute, one minute, 15 minutes. Now let's fill in the times. 158, hour, 258, hour, 358, minute, 359, minute, four o'clock, 15 minutes, 415. So now I know how to put it on my number line. Let's look at one final example. Sarah does homework for two hours and 17 minutes. If she ends at 4.15, what time did she begin? So let's mark up our text. She does homework for two hours and 17 minutes. That's how long she did it for, so there's my ET, my elapsed time. If she ends at 4.15, oh, there's my ending. What time does she begin? That means we're looking for my start. Let's go find it. Which graphic organizer is going to help us get there? I can see that this graphic organizer has the unknown start. Let's fill in what we know. The elapsed time, 2 hours and 17 minutes. The end time, 4.15. But now I need to find the start. So this one now requires me to go backwards in time. So I have to go backwards 2 hours and 17 minutes. Let's jot down how we know we'll get there. We know that we'll do 1 hour one hour and then we know that if I'm at 15 I'll have to break that up so let's see what happens when I get there because I know what move I would make but I'm not sure if students would know what move they would make so let's do it together 415 I'm gonna go an hour I would get 315 then I go another hour and I'd get 215 now I'm at 215 what's the easiest thing to take away if I have to take away 17 minutes well, 17 is made up of that 15 minutes would be easy, and then I'd need two more. So let's take care of the 15 first. So from 2.15, go backwards, I'd go backwards 15 minutes, I'd now be at 2 o'clock. And now I have to go backwards one minute, and then backwards another minute. Let's see what time that is. 2 o'clock, 1.59, 1.58. So you can see here how important it is that we've been choral counting because if we don't know how to go from 2 o'clock backwards to 159 or forwards from 2, 315 to 215, all of these jumps are not as simple as I just made them. Choral counting is going to help prepare students for elapsed time. Last but not least, let's put it on the number line. We know that we're going to end at 415. We know we have to travel 2 hours and 17 minutes. Let's travel first. One hour, two hours, then we broke it up by a 15 minute, and then by minutes, minute, minute. Let's see what happens. One hour, one hour, 15, one, and one. One hour, 315. Go backwards, 315 to 215. 215, 
to 2 o'clock, 2 o'clock to 159, 159 to 158. 158 was our starting time. I hope these strategies have helped you. You can find this work mat with all three of the graphic organizers, as well as a separate work mat, work mat for each type of elapsed time problem on my website at www.empowerlearngrow.com backslash resources. Don't forget to put in your email and then you'll have full access to all the free downloads. Please like, share, and subscribe so that more teachers like you can hear more messages like this. Don't forget to visit me online at www.empowerlearngrow.com.